So hello everyone, I'm Jess. I am with, well, I'm the founder, I should say, of Black Travelers Network, so most of you guys know me. I am joined today by Rodney Knight. And Rodney um, has been so amazing and so gracious in joining us today because one of the things that I know about our community is that, you know, we have those of you who are located all over the country and with some countries who are uh, represented as being a part of BTN. And this whole COVID-19 global pandemic has impacted us in a significant way, um, whether you're here in the United States or you're abroad, everybody has been and impacted in some way. And so what I know from having a number of different conversations within BTN is that there are a number of you who are out there who may have never considered having, starting a business or having our own business, I should say. And now this whole global pandemic has, has caused you guys to really start to think about the possibilities of starting a business. And luckily some of you have. Uh, and so with that being said, I wanted to uh, bring on someone who has just started a business to really serve as an example for all of you who may be on the fence or who may have just started. Um, so Rodney, uh, is the owner of the Roadside Boys. Rodney, you're located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, so tell us, what is the Roadside Boys? Um, the Roadside Boys is a freelance mechanical service. We deliver 24-hour roadside assistance for uh, instances where people's cars are broken down or un unable to move. And we have five mechanics and two tow trucks and we operate in the 704 vicinity wow and so what gave you the idea to start this business well it really started when my mom had her car fixed by uh, one of her family members they were uh, doing a diagnosis they said it was one thing my mom knew her truck she said this ain't it so like yeah you're right and I, and I was like, man, it seems skeptical. But they ended up saying that it was something else, and it was like some type of um, converter on the um, transmission. And then they had put that on. And the check engine light went off because they disconnected the battery, but it came back on. The truck um, almost died on us driving back. We were coming from Tennessee to North wow. Carolina. Yeah, and um, I ended up having to fix the car myself, and that was the first time I ever worked on the car. Really? And ever. And yeah, and ever since then, it's been people telling me to help them with their car. Like, I noticed that it's a real need for the service. It's, it's uh, been like high demand for my skills. So when did you first learn to work on cars? Like, how did that come about? Um, well, at the time, I knew an actual mechanic. And um, the problem with my car, it wasn't anything too big. It was a few screws and a little sensor and a YouTube video. And it pretty much got me on the right track. Really? And so you had no problem just jumping in there and being creative yeah. and, and fixing your I, own cars? I said, let me see the tool set. <laughs> yeah. So how long, has, um, how long has it been since you started your business? Um, it's only been about a month and a half, about five weeks, six weeks. Yeah. And so, like, with this whole COVID-19 global pandemic, did it encourage you to start, or did you have any doubts? So, um, when it came down to starting it up and then the COVID-19 hitting about the same time, I was skeptical. I was like, we're going to have to get us off some face masks. Maybe we got to delay the launch, but, you know, I noticed, like, you know, everything come with a risk, and, you know, like, you always got to moderate and play it safe, you know. I just got my information that I need to know on being as safe as possible and, you know, minimize my contact because I work on cars. I don't work with people. Mm. It doesn't really affect my line of work too much. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I mean, your service would – appear to me to be essential so no matter what the environment is. So with that being said, like what 
what were some of, well, I know you have a team of people that you work with. And so how did you start to assemble a team? So with assembling a team, it's um like, initially I had multiple connections uh, in the mechanic um, area because I already was trying to build up my knowledge and build up my experience. So I had acquaintances that worked on cars as well. And then when I threw out the idea that, you know, we can monetize this on a bigger level, there was a lot of people willing to join, but I had to narrow it down to, you know, like, are we all on the same page? And from there on, it was pretty much easy. You know, it's just going for what you know you need to do. Yeah. And so really you were part of the, the catalyst and the leader to get everybody together to start this. So within the context of, because most of our folks, I would have to say, is probably not located in Charlotte, but we do have some people in the community who are in Charlotte, because, and, and I know this because I've gotten emails from people who have inquired about, you know, traveling out of the Charlotte air- airport. So what radius do you cover? Do you cover a certain radius? Like how far do you go in terms of your servicing as far as my service goes um i was actually in south carolina a few days ago but i mostly range my service because it's about quick response time most of the time somebody has like a problem where they need it fixed right now so i try to get as close as possible within the charlotte area to like the perimeter maybe a 30 minute drive time that's a pretty wide uh, yeah, a region yeah. and you and you said people have the ability to contact you at any given time at any given time that's so amazing so like what are some of the obstacles that you may have ran, ran into in terms of starting or you know little early challenges because one of the things i always tell people in business you know you you we all sort of like think about the most positive scenario but business is so tricky (laughs) and you know you you kind of have to be a problem solver to really be successful and to try to figure out ways um you know to to maneuver around the challenges so has there been any early challenges that you guys have faced in starting your business so um in a few of the earlier days, about week one and two of the launch, I had scammers calling my phone what? They, um, to verify that you're real. I need you to send me the verification code. And they'll send me like a Google voice code. And I'd be like, man, they trying to get my Google. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Also, wow. Um, um, somebody had contacted me. And I was busy, like, working on another car or maybe just doing something else. So I got one of the other mechanics to go out. But because I had to reach out to my other mechanic, and it was also um, around the earlier time when I first started developing my mechanic team, we didn't have a quick response time. So they end up finding someone else. But then we drove all the way out there. And I didn't develop the idea of a deployment fee then. So it just wasted gas. Mm. And then also, once I started to implement the deployment fee, people were like, I don't know, man. That just seems seem like you're just adding to my bill. So mm-hmm. then I come up with the idea to take a portion of the deployment fee off of the labor fee once the whole job is completed. I have to build up the rules to make it work the right way. Wow, that's really amazing that you had that creativity to do that because, and that speaks to a very important point, um, especially when it comes to pricing. You know, I I, I can say because even in 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 my business, I find that you know there are things that you know maybe I should not charge for that you know we we don't charge for and then there are certain things that we do charge for that maybe we weren't charging for so that's a really valuable um vice that's tucked in there in your statement because for those who are interested in in going into business you may go in with one idea and concept about your pricing strategy the adjustments along the way that you have to make um 
what are some, you know, what are some of the, the other lessons you've learned? Because that sounds like a, a really good lesson um, that you learned in this early startup phase. Is there any other lesson that kind of sticks out in your mind? Um, I had to make sure that I had a clear way of accepting cash as well. On another time when uh, I had another mechanic do a job, we had issues with accepting the payment. The customer mm -hmm. had a whole new app that they didn't know how to use. They said they had cash, but it turns out they couldn't get to it. They electronically couldn't wire it to me at the moment. We had issues with the transaction because um, it wasn't clear in how the payment process was going to be carried out. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that, that, I mean, that definitely speaks to another uh, thing that's really important your system in terms of how you're going to get paid. <laughs> you know, there are so many lessons. And this is why I'm a huge um, proponent of advocating that people who have a business idea or a business concept to just start because, you know, in our minds, like when we sit on the fence and we think about, oh, I should do, a lot of times you don't really know until you, you do. Like there are certain things you're not going to, to be able to know. Um, so in the context of the roadside boys, are there any, any specifics of uh, the work that you guys specialize in? Um, we specialize in roadside assistance. That's in times where your vehicle is broken down on the side of the road while you are in motion. Most of the time you'll be like on the highway or main street. it will be hard to get access to any type of supplies or, you know, services that will be able to help you at the moment. And then mm -hmm. our key is also the response time. If you contact us, we'll be out there in the next 30 minutes to an hour. Wow, that's fast. That's, 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 that's faster than a lot of times. <laughs> Especially if you're really broken down on the side of the road. You know, everybody starts panicking like, what am I going to do now? Don't nobody want to be sitting on the side of the road. That's and that's right. what we specialize in, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody got a mechanic shop. But can they come to you? Can they get your vehicle to the shop? You know, it's a whole in-between transition that's missing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some of the long-term goals that you see for uh, the Roadside Boys? Um, I hope to expand my business to uh, make it corporate and have my business branched off into different states, become international. Yeah, that's awesome. And with that sort of being your, your vision and your goal, like how, how is it that you feel like people can best support you now, you know, in the early phase of your startup? I feel like right now it's a uh, word of mouth and, you know, just a uh, spreading of the information because everybody does need a good mechanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think about, my car alone, like the importance of me just pre preserving the life of it and right. having gone and taken um, my car to like different shops and had people intentionally do bad things to my car. Yeah. Like, uh, that, you know, good mm -hmm. business is a key. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so part of why I wanted to do this, as I said in the very beginning, is I really wanted to give um, – our community a chance to know that you know it is okay to start and now do not let the the economy and all that's happening be your uh, deterrent from starting or delaying you right. so do you have any advice for you know people who who are new who might be interested or who might be undecided about starting a business um i say do as much research as possible. Even if you can't act on it, you can think on it. You can get a more well-developed plan. You can do some more research into someone who's already did something similar to what you're doing. There's always ways to improve, and it's always best to challenge yourself. If it's hard, you should do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, how can people get a hold of you, Rodney? Like, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Mm hmm I have an active Instagram page, The Roadside Boys LLC. And I also have a phone number on my profile that you can contact as well. 
Okay, sounds good. And just so you know, guys, all of Rodney's um, methods of, you know, contacting him will be available to all of you uh, in our communication to you. So if you if you are located in Charlotte, North Carolina, or if you know people who are in uh, the area, um, definitely share his his contact information. Uh, with them and we'll also include uh, the social media handles uh, for all of you again thank you so much Rodney for taking nope. the time to sit and just chat really quickly about this topic and you know we wish you the best of luck and much success in your business I'm just so proud of you for you know being a young brother who just decided to take a step and like make it happen so congratulations to you and you know you got it so whenever you need if you need anything in terms of how we can be supportive of what you're doing please let us know no problem it was good talking to you jessica yeah you as well